the pool deck of a luxury apartment building at the foot of the Stone Arch Bridge in Minneapolis sadly served as a recording studio of sorts on the 4th of July, as some residents captured the chaos that struck fear and anger into an already rattled city. In this clip, one renter goes to confront the crowd, only to have a firework thrown at him. The group shouts back and walks away. In more video, fireworks are tossed at police as they attempt to push crowds out. Now apartments where some renters pay more than $3,000 a month to live are riddled with blast marks, even a bullet hole left behind. Days later, we went back to Father Hennepin Park to walk the bridge with someone who has power to actually do something about it, Minneapolis City Council member Michael Rainville. When people do ask that question, is it safe to, to come to Minneapolis, is it safe to visit, what do you tell them? I tell them it is safe, a absolutely. Do you have to be cautious? Yes, uh, especially late at night. But even the last few weeks, that has to be a harder message to sell, Mike. I, I would agree it's a harder message, of course. It's really hard to see the deterioration of, of, of civility. Rainville first points to what he calls immediate prevention efforts to get at ongoing problems. Concrete blocks and barriers have gone up around this park to keep street racers out of intersections. The second street south has been uh, redesigned into a series of cul-de-sacs so that hopefully no one will come back and keep shooting fireworks driving around. Boom Island is, they're talking about putting a gate at the entryway so that it can be opened at sunrise and, and closed at 10 or, or 12 o'clock at night. Boom Island recorded 100 gunshots alone on the 4th of July. Seven people were hospitalized. But some believe the efforts do more to punish the people who live here rather than the criminals intent on destruction. My dad actually was looking at the apartment buildings that um, it like happened at and that it was shot at and um, he was like planning on like moving there and now he is not because of the whole thing. Public safety advocate and citizen reporter Crime Watch believes it's time to get a loitering ordinance back on the books in Minneapolis. Do you feel like that will ever be enacted again and would something like that help? The loitering ordinance was taken away and there are those who say that that's this, it's a tool that the police need. So I, I, I look forward to public discussions about how do we get a handle on this crime. You know, this is not the safe city it used to be and we have to be smart enough to understand why. Rainville believes a lack of support for the police also plays a role. It's why he often delivers food to MPD precincts at roll calls and talks to officers about what's going on. It's a real simple message. Thank you. Uh, I, I have no idea what it's like to do your job being so short, but you're doing a great job. The staffing shortage in a department down hundreds of officers is easy to see. A sign on the door that the front desk is no longer staffed. In a precinct where gunshot wounds have skyrocketed 675 percent from 2018 and where officers told Alpha News they have yet to see the mayor or any other council member stop by. What kind of message does that send? Well, you know, I can't speak for the other uh, council members or, or the mayor, but I was I'm from a blue collar family. The blue collar people make the world go wrong. They make the city run. And so I respect the police for that. And I I understand how short staffed they are and how they are despised by uh, a segment of our population. But do you understand that? Is it hard for you to wrap your head around that? Why do they need to be despised by a segment of the population? I, I, I don't understand that my family taught me to respect all, all public employees, especially the police. I'm trying everything I can think of to help you, to help our city, to help heal. And uh, that's why I'm here. So thank you for what you do.